Hello. Well, we're off on another adventure. This time. This time, we're going to be exploring the Gulf Savannah region up in far north Queensland. We're going to start this adventure in the Atherton Tablelands of Lake Tinneroo. Then make our way across the Savannah Way to Corumba. Stopping at a few places in between, check out this amazing country. Lake Tinaru is about an hour and a half out of Cairns. There are a couple of ways to get here. Either way, you have to pull your van up through some pretty steep and windy roads. There is Gillies Range Road, which is a bit shorter, but very windy. Or up through Coranda on the Kennedy Highway. Still windy, but not as bad. And the windy part is shorter. We stayed at the Lake Tinaru Holiday Park, a great little park with plenty of room for big vans like ours. The park has a pool, a resort style pool as they call it, a barbecue area and a play area for kids. It also has boat hire and is located right near Lake Tinaru. Lake Tinaru is a stocked impound, so you do need a permit to fish here. It costs us $2270 for a week with power and water. Plenty of these guys wandering around. Anyone who has spent time up here will know the curlies and their blood curling screams in the middle of the night. There is plenty to explore around the lake. There are plenty of picnic areas and bush camping spots scattered around the lake with easy access from the road down to the lake's edge. Not too far from the park is Lake Tinaru Dam. There is a made road to the car park, but we chose a scenic route, a nice little drive along the Barren River. Not quite the four wheel drive challenge of the Bloomfield or Billy Goats track, it was a bit more of a bush drive. Then you end up at the spillway with this massive jet of water spraying out into the river. It's quite spectacular seeing the amount of water just pouring out from the lake into the Barren River as it starts its journey down into Cairns and out to the sea. So today we've come out to Miller Miller Falls in the Atherton Tablelands. It was recommended as one of the places, if you're going to see only one waterfall, this is the one to come and see. And there's hundreds of them around here. Yeah, apparently. So you can spend all your time seeing waterfalls. Yeah. So we've come out to Miller Miller Falls. Let's go have a look. Apparently, Miller Miller Falls is one of the most photographed falls in all of Australia. Miller Miller Falls are heritage listed. Surrounded by rainforest, the falls plunge into a pristine water hole below, where you can enjoy a refreshing swim in the cool water. There's also a picnic area here. And if you're lucky, you might even catch a glimpse of a platypus. Here we are. Where are we? Actually. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> the fig tree curtain, is that right? The curtain fig tree. The curtain fig tree, there we go, up at the Atherton Tablelands. Um, just come from Miller Miller Falls. And someone has said to us, oh, you have to go and check out this. So we are. Check out the curtain fig tree. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. It's a pleasant little walk in. Yeah. In the rainforest here. Yeah. Bit of a boardwalk. Very nice. And of course, if we listen carefully enough, there's a sound of birds. Is that it? Oh my goodness. Is that it? Whoa. Do you reckon that's it? It's enormous. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. That's just all the um, vines. The tree is nearly 50 metres tall with a trunk circumference of 39 metres. It's estimated to be over 500 years old. The extensive aerial roots drop 15 metres to the forest floor below and have formed the curtain. That's so going in. <laughs> Here we are at Platypus Rock, apparently. We might be able to find a way to get up there and have a look around. Not sure exactly where yet. But I am not going up that face rock. Here's Mr. Paul, impatience. 
ready to go. Yeah, right. I'm certainly not going up there. What steps? Oh, those steps. Yeah, we might go there. I'll <laughs> serve you right. Rushing up here. <sighs> Why is this called Platypus Rock? <sighs> yep. I reckon. So, for some reason, the Atherton Council has put a fence on top of a rock. There's a big rock, admittedly. You can't see anything except a couple of trees. So there's no expansive view. The trees block out the view of the lake. Um, however, we can climb a rock and it's got a fence on it. But she has these things in it. I wonder if that's for um, rock climbing. Ah, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. Mmm, okay. I've sailed down the rock. Mm. Mm. Who knows? There we go. We found out the reasons why there's a fence on top of a rock. Why? Abseiling. <laughs> why do we have um, fences for abseiling? Uh, don't know. Some people don't fall off rocks. Yeah. Who knows? Well, it's time to leave the Atherton Tablelands and make our way further west. Almost immediately, you notice a change in the landscape. Pull up on the Kennedy Highway, on the Savannah Way, into a, a, into a roadside stop. I'm gonna grab some lunch. quiet what's the lunch went well I'm having salad Ooh. and these are for you <gasps> Ooh, sandwiches sandwiches a piece of salmon and some salad yep. very nice mm -mm. Mm. Ready for lunch, you? Yes, please. Back on the road, we made our way to Mount Surprise and pulled into the Bedrock Village Caravan Park. It costs $35 a night with power and water. The park is well laid out with a pool, a communal fire pit. There's also a wood fired pizza oven available for use. One of the key attractions in this area is the Andara Lava Tubes and Bedrock Village offer a guided tour. You can choose a full day or half day. We went with the half day and it cost $92 each. A tour bus picks you up at the park and is about a 45 minute drive. Yes Chris, 45 minute drive. The tour takes you to three sections of the Andara Lava Tubes. There is a fair bit of rock hopping and climbing involved. So a good pair of sturdy shoes is a must for this tour and a bottle of water because it got quite warm out there. Wow, it's incredible to think that this was a one-time flowing lava. It's quite an eerie experience walking through the tubes. The park has one of the longest lava tube cave systems in the world. A large volcano erupted and the lava flowed rapidly down a dry riverbed. The top outer layer cooled and formed a crust while the molten lava below drained outwards leaving behind a series of hollow tubes. On the other part of the tour you walk up around the crater rim and learn about the flora and fauna of the McBride province and its volcanic history. This tour includes morning tea, transfers and the national park fees. Now, I've always thought we had a big van 
But I tell you what, when it comes up against these fellas here, it looks very small and insignificant. There are plenty of these road trains out here and we need to be mindful of safely sharing the roads with them. For example, when we saw one coming the other way, we would slow down and pull to the side of it to allow the water in to pass. From Mount Surprise, we made our way to Tallaroo Hot Springs. The road into Hot Springs is a well-maintained dirt road. A little dusty, but not too corrugated. Tallaroo Hot Springs unite one of outback Queensland's most extraordinary geological wonders with the Aboriginal hospitality of the Hewerman people. Set in the heart of Gulf Savannah country, Tallaroo's landscape of pools and terraces, vivid colours and diverse formation provides a captivating backdrop for a truly unique experience. Okay, so we're here at Tallaroo. We pulled up after those dusty roads in. Let's check out how the caravan went. Let's see if there's any dust laying around. Look at that. It doesn't appear to be anything. Looks pretty good. So far, so good. I think it's done its job. The caravan park is set over a nice open area with some great facilities like this camp kitchen. Very clean and modern amenities. A cafe with an alfresco dining area. Then there is the yarning circle. We were invited to sit around the open fire and spent the evening sharing tales and adventures with locals and other visitors. It cost us $40 a night for our site with power and water. We took a tour to the heart of Tallaroo, the ancient and breathtaking hot springs. Learn about this unique geological wonder, Tallaroo's fascinating history and the connection Newman people have had with the country for thousands of years. The Tallaroo Hot Springs Tour is a guided walk across the elevated boardwalk that provides an incredible view of the vents and the terraces formed by the flowing springs. At the end of the tour, we had the opportunity to soak in the healing waters of the springs in the original soaking pool. The tour cost $36 and was well worth the investment. The time at Tallaroo was up and we were back on the road. We made our way to Forsyth, a small outback town about half an hour off the highway at Georgetown. The road is quite corrugated in places and there is livestock wandering across the road, so you've got to keep an eye out for that. We stayed at the Forsyth Tourist Park, a really nice little park on the edge of town. It cost $28 a night with power and water and there was plenty of space for our van and car. Now, for a quick look around town. Pub. Post office. And general store. A laundromat. Oh look, there's all in the cupboard. Oh, town park. Apparently, there's some carvings on trees the end near the path. Well, that's what the brochure said. Let's go and have a look. Complete with the obligatory locomotive in the park. And who doesn't love a bit of a play in an old train? Oh, there's one of the carvings. Very clever. And 
here's another carving. Oh, and another one. Very clever. Now. An eye. Oh, there's a carving of a horse here, Paul. Carving of a sexy lady. I'm assuming it's a lazy, I suppose, which could be a man. The nice bum. Here we are coming up to the full size railway station. Tell me, you're running late. Yeah. Did you miss it? I missed the train. By quite a number of years, I imagine. Yeah, the train left without you. <laughs> Apparently, uh -huh. that's always a good thing. <laughs> now I want to see Paul get off here. You've come to the end of the platform, Paul. Now what? Yeah, that was a bit easy. <laughs> What's that, Paul? Oh, it's platform one, is it? <laughs> I thought that was platform one. That's platform two. Okay. That's platform two and you're on platform one. Parked in the railway car park. Gee, it reminds me when I was working in Melbourne. Remember? Get off the train. To the car park to find your car. I'm curious, which station does this remind you of? <laughs> well, maybe not the station. <laughs> the routine. <laughs> Good morning. This morning we're off to what I call Cobalt Gorge. Yeah, I call it Cobalt Gorge. Yeah, we're gonna we've got a bet on, haven't we, Paul? We have. We do. Whoever's right. Don't have to do dishes for a week. I'll <laughs> <laughs> um, be having a lot of takeaway, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you that sure you're wrong? <laughs> no, I'm very confident. So Cobalt Gorge um, is about oh, 43 kilometres out of Forsyth, but it takes an hour to get there. And um, you know, you can see from the road that a uh, wire takes an hour to get there. Yeah. yeah. So we've left plenty of time, but we, we, at Cobalt Gorge, you need to take the tour. So the tour was $108 each. It's a three hour tour. But with that, you can you can kind of hang around the Cobalt Gorge village for the day. So you can use their infinity pool. You can buy lunch at the restaurant place. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. On the way to the gorge, we came across some livestock on the road. Some a little more acquisitive than others. The area is mostly unfenced, so it's very common to be sharing the road with livestock. We arrived at the gorge, parked up in the day visitor area, and then made our way to reception to check in to our tour. We got to ride shotgun and enjoyed front row seat, spotted a few roos on the move. Oh man, let's get a wriggle on. Watch that first step. From the meeting area, we were guided out to the gorge area. There is a bit of climbing involved as we navigated the rocks and crevices. We arrived at the glass bridge. One of the highlights of this tour it was about 20 metres above the water. Apparently the water below is about 11 metres deep. We then made our way down to the water below and glided gently between the walls of the gorge. 
There are freshwater crocs living in these waters. We spotted one early, but we're assured they're quite harmless. Still, I'm not going swimming in there. I'm on, I'm on the seat, I think. <laughs> nice. All you need is a glass of something when you're right. Yes, please. Have a glass. <laughs> How was it? Very refreshing. Amazing. Cold. the bar with no beer. No beer, Paul. The bar with no beer. Oh, beer. <laughs> the bar with no beer. <laughs> so, Paul. Yeah. How'd you find Cobble Gorge? How did I find Cobble Gorge? <laughs> oh, I liked it. It was good. Yeah. It's beautiful to go down the middle of it like that. Yeah, there's a boat you mean? Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. What was your favourite bit? Uh, going down the middle of it in the boat. Is that your favourite bit? I like I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So peaceful. It was just interesting to be there in between that. Then, if livestock on the road wasn't enough, on the way back we encountered this dust devil, or willy willy as we call it here in Australia. Apparently quite common out here. So I've called into the Ainsley pub for some lunch, on the way to Copperfield Gorge. Check it out and see how it is. Built just after 1908, the hotel is the sole survivor of five hotels in town. As the name of the gorge might suggest, this was once a copper mining town. By the time the mine closed in 1922, the town had all but disappeared. All right, so we're out at Copperfield Gorge. Mm. Just after a nice feed at the Lionsley Hotel. And um, we'll take a look at this gorge, eh? Yep. Let's go. Let's go. So apparently, the, um, this was all lava, but there was a lava tube that ran the length of the gorge, which was a lava tube, and then the, and the roof just collapsed in, which created the gorge. Amazing, eh? You can view the gorge from its edge overlooking the collapsed roof of the lava tube or climb down to the water's edge. While not as pretty as Cobbled Gorge, it does have a rugged beauty about it. Setting off on the last leg of our journey, we called in Georgetown for some fuel and a snack for a trip ahead. One of our concerns travelling through remote areas was the availability of fuel. Fortunately, there was plenty of petrol stations along the way. Once again, we were reminded of the size of some of these road trains that we share the road with out here. As the road narrows, you need to be on the lookout for road trains coming the other way. We were advised that because of their size and length, they don't move over, so we would need to pull right off the bitumen and slow right down. Which is probably better, as you don't want 40 to 50 tyres flicking stones up at you at 100 kilometres an hour. As we travelled through the Gulf Savannah, we crossed many dry riverbeds. It is incredible to think that during the wet season, these are raging torrents of water, but right now, they are a majestic landscape of shrubs and dust. Fortunately, the road was wide enough for both of us as we passed this huge rig. We were looking forward to a break and ready to stretch our legs after several hours driving. 
into Normanton, town and outback Queensland, up near the Gulf of Carpentaria. Let's go for a walk down the main street. Let's go have a look. This is the Central Hotel. I don't think it would look out of place in the Crocodile Dundee movies. And then there's the Purple Pub, full of character and lots of quirky items displayed throughout the pub. I think we have time for a quick break here. Come to see Chris the Croc in Normanton. Come over this fella. The size of his mouth. It's huge. <laughs> Feeling refreshed and ready to tackle the last one hour of our trip, we cross the Norman River and the floodplains out towards Karumba. Karumba is situated at the mouth of the Norman River in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's probably best known for its fishing and prawning. We stayed at the Karumba Gulf Country Caravan Park and it cost $40 a night with power and water. Got the bikes down again and hit the road back to the Les Wilson Barramundi Discovery Centre. There we go, we've made it to the Barramundi Discovery Centre in Karumba. Let's go take a look, shall we? Yep, look forward to this. All right. The centre is an interactive and state-of-the-art interpretive centre that provides history, stories, life cycle and habits of the elusive Barramundi. Yeah, elusive, because we've never caught one. You can learn about the wetlands and mangroves and about the incredible bird life and stunning southern gulf flora. After a very entertaining visit to the Discovery Centre, we made our way back to the caravan park. The centre is about two kilometres from the park, along a very flat road. Quite a pleasant ride, ain't we? Uh, it's 6.30 in the morning. Wendra and I are up and about already. And not for no reason. I would never get up for no reason at 6.30 in the morning, well I wouldn't. What are we doing walking up the main street at 6.30 in the morning, Ted? We're going fishing. Going fishing. Yeah. Booked into Nick's Fishing Adventures here at Karumba, and he's picking us up at the boat ramp at 6.30, uh, 6.45 this morning. So we're walking down there. Check it out, it's a beautiful morning, not a breath of wind. Beautiful. It's blowing the sky, the sun's starting to rise. What if that's weekend? Very peaceful. All right, let's go check it out. Hey, what about that wallaby that we saw on the street? <laughs> Walking up here, there was a wallaby in the middle of the main road. So that was interesting. Haven't seen that too often. Mm. Pretty cool though. Yep. All right, let's go find Nick. Well, we found Nick and we're joined on our fishing expedition by one other fella as we headed out into the Gulf of Carpentaria, full of excitement and anticipation. Check out the sunrise. So when has caught a first fish? <laughs> uh, I, I won't bring it over though. Is it, it's too little to keep, isn't it? It's an undersized jewel fish. Oh, catfish. Oh, yeah. oh, what's that? A little catfish. Don't bring it in. It's a catfish. You <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> it's gone under the boat. You all right, got it? What'd you catch for? Who knows, son? Mm -hmm. Mackerel. Cool. What else? And maybe show me. Show me? Do, 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 do. 
Actually, they're not babies. That's their, that's full size. They're sand sharks, apparently. Show the shark. Okay, show your shark. Yours is the smaller one. <laughs> oh, look at that. Woohoo! Yummo. Here's Wendy's catch. Very happy. <laughs> well done. Very productive day. Very productive. Yeah. Biggest fish I reckon I've ever caught. Look at this. Here is the catch of the day. Look at that. Woohoo! This is the fruits of our fishing trip this morning. Two blue nose. Two salmon. blue nose salmon. Yep. Mackerel. Yep. And two sand sharks. Two sand sharks. Excellent. This we went out with um, Mix Adventures this morning, and um, look what we come home with. Very, very happy. Good morning fishing. Now we're going to go and have some lunch at the Sunset Tavern. Oh, look at this view! It is beautiful. Apparently, at night they have amazing sunsets as well. Well, when I think the Gulf Savannah has lived up to expectations. What an amazing part of our country. It really is spectacular out here. And that's about it for this video. Hopefully you can join us next time as we continue our travels around Australia and look for new and exciting adventures. Thanks for stopping by. Bye for now. Bye.